So welcome to uh, this time together with the local peace economy and tools for the journey. We want to talk about how to use the workbook and the website today. And I'm Jody Evans. I'm one of the co-founders of Code Pink and the cultivator of the local peace economy um, here at Code Pink. And I'm Emily Franco. I'm the local peace economy coordinator at Code Pink. Welcome, everyone. So we're, uh, I see that many of you are introducing each other in the chat. We hope you continue to do that. And um, Emily, if you could uh, take us into some grounding. Sounds great. Yeah, if you've been with us on Local Peace Economy calls before, you'll know that we always start by grounding in a piece of culture, because culture is where all of this work starts, centering pieces from cultural workers as well. So. Today we're gonna to start with a poem called All the Hemispheres by Hafiz. Um, and this resonated with me, especially the first line, which you hear in a moment, um, in terms of taking us into the unfamiliar, into what we don't know and walking that path anyway. Um, so if we could just take a moment, just take a, take a grounding breath together. This is All the Hemispheres by Hafiz. Leave the familiar for a while. Let your senses and bodies stretch out like a welcome season onto the meadows and shores and hills. Open up to the roof. Make a new watermark on your excitement and love. Like a blooming night flower, bestow your vital fragrance of happiness and giving upon our intimate assembly. Change rooms in your mind for a day. All the hemispheres in existence lie beside an equator in your heart. Greet yourself in your thousand other forms as you mount the hidden tide and travel back home. All the hemispheres in the heaven are sitting around a fire chatting while stitching themselves together into the great circle inside of you. So as Jody's about to talk about, we're going back home, just like, Wow. He's talked about in that, in that poem. Oh, Jody, you're muted. Thank you. Um, home, thank you for bringing us home, Emily. Just a reminder that economy means home. In Greek, it's home. And what we see is we've forgotten how to create home sweet home in our community, for the planet, for each other, the distractions, the force of the, the war economy and what it drags us into has taken us away from the sweetness of home. And so grounding us in that space in home to start is a reminder for each of you to do that for yourselves. There is so much happening this day that these days that is so disturbing and really the place to pivot to is what am I doing to enrich home for those around me, for myself, for my community, and for the planet. And it's a really good way to pivot because there is so much trying to drag everyone down right now. So much that our hearts and psyches are not meant to hold. And so we can find our way back by being in our hearts and being in our communities. So, we can't end war until we end the war economy. And war is serving the war economy. We see that around the world right now. And we and we see it in ways I haven't seen in my 70 years. It's um it's really profound, the insidiousness of it, and, and ways that we can see it and ways that we can't see it. And it's already more than we can handle for what we can see. You know, there's too much information and not enough education, which in real education, it's about your critical thinking that is rooted in your experience. And where we're taken is into reaction and away from our own experience, but engaged in experiences of others that we actually don't have a grounding in. Experience and, and um, wisdom arises from the relationship with the material world. It arises in living with it, in it, of it. 
And if you really think about it, if you reflect right now, so much that weighs on your hearts and minds right now isn't anything you are in an intimate relationship with. It is information. It is disturbing. It is real. I'm not doubting the reality of it, but it's not in a relation, intimate relationship with you. And um, it's, it's disturbing. You know, any parent knows that our behavior is taught through much more than words. It's taught through behavior and action and engagement. And the war economy forces us to behave in ways that force addictions on us because everything is a proxy and empty and all the ways that it forces us to engage unroots us in that relationship with grounded material life. So we wanted to create a toolbox and a support for the journey that we all need to take out of the war economy into cultivating the peace economy we all desire. Um, you know, the war economy does a very good job of lying to us and co-opting our lives to serve it. Building our muscle around community and understanding the addictions that have been forced on us by the war economy are some of the first steps. I call it the first liberating steps. So this workbook is meant to support you in reflection um, because the future and what is needed is alive in you. At the core of our DNA is the service to life and it's rooted in our DNA. It's, it's love, which serves the commitment to life. Our, our very DNA is about the replication of life. It is ancient. It has been core to cultures throughout millennia. So we're not here to invent something, but bring back something that serves life by taking our own lives back from the war economy. The website is dynamic, alive, and growing ecosystem to educate, inspire, and activate you. It is like you, just beginning, and when, will now and forever be made better by you telling us what you need what isn't there when you are looking and what continues to show up as needed. Also what you stumble upon that's missing. So following need is what we have done here and what we will continue to do. And what is the root of this process? How do we relate to need? Not desire, not fantasy, not things that are created out here, but literally the needs of ourselves, our communities and the planet. We see this as one of the biggest lessons we've acquired on the journey. Navigating complexities is staying in relationship to need, trying not to solve problems to our desires, which essentially don't connect us to humanity. So Emily, can you start by taking us on a tour? Absolutely. And before we show you the website in more depth, um, we do wanna name some gratitudes for people who worked on this project. First, Caroline Woolard, project manager and doula, and also Or Zubalski, a truly brilliant web designer who heard the desire for it to reflect principles of nature and life, and you'll see that in a moment. We really wanted this site to feel inviting and different from other places on the internet, and Or made that a reality. And the team who worked on content are Calandra Davis, Hal Roser, April Short, as well as myself. So now let's dig into it. And I say dig very intentionally here because you'll notice the theme of the website, like the workbook, is very earthy. Lots of nature imagery and the colors are reminiscent of soil and the earth while still having some pink in there, of course. So I'm gonna share my screen. Just move it around here, great. So we'll start with the homepage at peaceeconomy.org. This is where you'll land when you enter the site. And this page can give you a little taste of what the rest of the site um, will look like and the different ways into different aspects of it. So as I scroll down here, you'll see it says welcome home, as we mentioned earlier. The theme of home is central to this work because economy at its root actually means how we manage home or how we take care of home. So when we're talking about the economy, we're not talking about something out there or structure outside of us like we're often taught. What we're really talking about is the web of relationships that we're all part of that help us care for each other and the earth 
which, as we know, are not separate. This is about taking back our life force from the war economy and returning home to right relationship with the earth and each other and cultivating the ways of being that support that relationship. So as I continue to scroll down the homepage here, you'll see a drop down menu. It's asking two questions, my location and the change I want to make. The locations are set up by region. So here you can select the region you're in or want to explore and the changes you want to make gives you options of one of the pivots, which we'll get into in depth a little, in a little bit. But for now, I'll just share an example. So I'll choose my location, which I'm located in Colorado. So that's the Western region. And the pivot that I want to make is from apathy to engagement. So I'll select both of those. And then I hit this button here, submit. It changes color when I hover over it, which is how you know it's a button. And as I scroll down, this is what you see. So here we see the flow that um, will connect and interconnect all these pieces. If you look that you've asked the question and we see that there, you know, we're moving from the ecosystem, the cycle that reconnects and the inspiration. So you see at the top of the, the site, it says what they are, but here's a better way to see how they relate and how you can use them. So, you, you know, at the top of the page, you've got the ecosystem, the cycle of reconnection, the pivots to peace and the inspiration. Well, right here, you've got all of those feeding each other, reminding us that this is all interconnected and um, that we also need to stay attuned to flow and nourishment. You know, we're so, a, 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 accustomed to things being direct and linear. We're trying to get back into the flow of life, the magic of life, uh, and the and the surprise of life. And so here it's like breaking out of that and saying, what's related? What where do I want to be? Thanks, Jody. So I'll just go into this um part in a little bit more depth. Um, so as Jody said, this will offer up the pivot that I selected on the left hand side here with some reflection. And it also offers a piece from the cycle of reconnection here, the inspiration section and the ecosystem, um, which is a group that's already doing local peace economy work in the region I selected. And we'll explore all of these sections in more depth. But again, just want to um, show that this is really a doorway to enter this exploration through to get your hands into the soil of this work and what's possible to explore. And you can see that all of these offerings here are links when I hover over it. Oh. Didn't mean to click that, sorry. <laughs> um, when I hover over it, um, you'll see, it, again, it changes color, which means it's a link and you, there's a short description here. But if I wanted to go directly to any of these resources because they really interested me, I could click it and it would take me directly there. So now we're gonna move over to the ecosystem. Well, so here is the place that Emily has spent a year researching, curating and collecting. Thank you, Emily. The purpose of this section is to help people get connected with their community near them. You know, we often talk about the fastest way to learn in a local peace economy is through immersion, just like another language. You're, you're basically learning another language. This tool is designed to help you find the local peace economy projects and offerings near you so you can connect and get into the practicing of this work in community because it's best and can only be done in community. There are about 1,500 groups and projects in the database, and Emily has a growing list every day of groups to add. So we hope this will serve you well, and you can also reach out to her and add more if you if you discover something. You can also use this tool for inspiration as a way to see what kind of work is happening around the United States that you can learn from and bring to your community if it really serves a need your community is asking for. So before um, we dive deeper into the ecosystem, I just want to say a few words about how we're creating this list. And in a local peace economy workbook on page 22 and 23, there's a list of principles and questions we use to guide our thoughts on what being part of a peace economy means. And these are the principles and questions we use to curate this database. And I really want to note here that there are a lot of gray areas and also it's not possible to know what a group's actual practice looks like on the inside without really getting involved. So as you connect with these groups, you may find things that may feel aligned or not aligned for you. The purpose of this tool is not to create a perfect database of the peace economy, but to give people ways into practicing the peace economy with their community. 
And this list will always be incomplete because there are far more ways the peace economy is being practiced and lived into than could ever be put onto a website, especially because the local peace economy has so many different manifestations and not all are necessarily formalized in a way that's easily recognizable from outside the community. So now I'll show you how this section works. So again, as I scroll down, similar to the homepage, you'll see two drop down questions here. The first asks for a location and the second asks for what kind of practice I wanna to bring to my community. So again, let's go through an example. So again, I'll select my region, which is the West. And then in terms of practices here, you'll see there's a long list here. You can explore that and see what resonates with you. But let's say I'm interested in finding mutual aid groups near me. So again, I'll select those two and hit submit. And I'm in Colorado. These are alphabetized by state. You'll see California comes up first. So I'm going to keep scrolling till I get to Colorado. Here I see Colorado and I see Mutual Aid Monday. And that looks interesting to me. So I'd like to learn more. And so you'll see some basic information displayed below it, the city, the state, the region, and the scope. Um, most of these are self-explanatory, but I want to explain the scope a little bit more. This is referring to the scope of the work that they do. Some of the groups are super local because we are talking about the local peace economy. Most of the results you'll, you get will say local unless you search for otherwise specifically. While others are doing work regionally and some are doing work nationally, often supporting local work around the country or they have local chapters. But not bombs would be a great example of that. They have local groups all over the country. The New Economy Coalition is another great example of a national group supporting lots of different organizations across the country. So I see this basic information here about Mutual Aid Monday and I wanna learn more. And this link here that says website will take me to their website. Sometimes the group is really local and organic and doesn't have a website. So in that case, it might take you to a social media page of theirs. I tried to link whatever would be most helpful for someone um, if they wanted to learn more information to get involved. So there's another way to search, which is through these tags here. I'm gonna unclick these to get a fresh search going. And we'll go through an example with that as well. So with these tags, you can do a more curated search um, because you can search mul multiple things in one category as opposed to the dropdown, which only allows you to select one. For example, let's say I wanted to find transportation co-ops, see if there's anything in my city. Maybe I'm interested in starting one near me, or I want to see what's near me so I can support them rather than corporate rideshare companies. So I can click both co-op and scroll over here to transportation and travel and click that as well. And you'll see that it's curating these in real time. Um, maybe then I want to get more specific with the location and see what's in my area. So let's say, for example, I'm in the Northeast. I can um, go to this next line here, which is the region. I can select select Northeast. And again, it's curating it in real time um, further and further. And this is now just showing me transportation co-ops in the Northeast. You'll notice that some of these categories are broad while others are more specific. And it was a bit of a balancing act creating this section since people might be wanting to use it in different ways. So I tried to go with ways to engage with this tool that would be versatile and serve as many needs as possible. A couple of things I wanna note about a few of the categories. I'm gonna unclick these. And the first one, I'm scrolling back over to co-op. So this category is not just co-ops, but also organizations that have co-ops as some aspect of their work. Organizations that support co-ops in their development, for example, would show up here as well. Or maybe part of a group's work is running a co-op cafe, but that's not the entire scope of what they do. So this is why having the direct link um, to learn more is helpful. Next is education, support, and skill building right here. This is a really, really broad category. These can, things can look a lot of different ways, maybe formal education as we think about it, like schools, but also this category holds a lot of organizations supporting smaller groups to create structures to hold the work they do. A lot of these organizations are national or regional supporting local organizations, but there are lots of local organizations as well. So you can use the third line here um, of tags that allows you to, to select uh, what scope you're looking for to narrow your search if you'd like. 
And the next one I wanna say a few words about is community care development and organizing. In many ways, all of this is community care, but the groups with this tag either might be doing more holistic community care rather than focusing on one specific thing like food, for example, or many of them are doing work around stopping gentrification. A real estate cooperative would fit into this category, for example, but they'd also be tagged as a cooperative. So again, there are multiple ways to find things here. The intention was to give people using this tool as many ways into this exploration as possible, especially because some people might not might know exactly what they're looking for, but others might not. So the goal was to serve both needs as much as possible. And we really want this to be functional, as Jody said. So we welcome any feedback you have. And again, this is an ever-growing list. And if you have any projects you think should be added, you can email me at peaceeconomy at codepink.org. And that email will be in the follow-up email as well that we'll send after the webinar. We're also not the first people to do this work of consolidating this type of information. There are a lot of maps and directories of various kinds already out there. So we've consolidated the ones we know of here. So I'm gonna take this search off. And so as you can see, I'm scrolling down here and it says maps and directories. And there's a list here. Some of these are national and some are more local and regional. For example, you can see there's a directory of co-op businesses in Austin right here. If I continue to scroll down, I can hit view more and more will show up and these are all alphabetized. You can see there's a community land trust directory that's for across the US. So if I want to see if there's any community land trust near me, I could click that and go to that resource. And again, these are all links here. So if I were to click this, it would take me to the website where that resource um, is located. And if I continue to scroll down here, we have something called deep dives. And what we're calling deep dives are things like fellowships and long-term volunteer opportunities that allow you to really immerse yourself in the ecosystem a bit more and learn more intensively. Again, this is continually being updated as we come across things, uh, as we come across more opportunities. So scroll down here, you can just get a sense of some of the opportunities there. And as we've mentioned, the site is meant to deepen your experience of your workbook reflections. So how does this section connect to the workbook? We already mentioned um, the principles outlined in the workbook, but I also want to draw your attention to the mapping section in the workbook that starts on page 117. Through these reflections in this section of the workbook, maybe I realize that I'm trying to get a need met in the war economy, like food. And I'm curious how I might pivot away from the war economy in this area of my life. Maybe I want to try to find a local regenerative farm or a food co-op or a CSA. I can use this tool with these either drop down menus or these tags yeah. groups near me where I can um, get my food met, get my food from the peace economy rather than the war economy. Or maybe I have a skill that I've offered in a more transactional way in the past, but through the mapping exercise in the workbook, I've discovered that I want to offer it in service of my community in the peace economy. For example, perhaps I have training in some kind of healing modality like acupuncture. And by using this tool, I find out that Mutual Aid Monday is near me in Denver, and maybe I contact them and find out they're open to volunteers bringing those types of skills to their events. So you can begin to imagine the connections you can make when you've done some personal reflection in the workbook and then through the website, learn what's around you. So next we're gonna move to the cycle of reconnection. We're just moving across the menu bar up here. So as we do this work, we will discover the ways the war economy takes us away from care, from nourishing life and all the ways we can, especially celebration. And in coming into relationship with the war economy, you know, all the things that have gone ungrieved. It's painful to recognize the very narrow violent structure that we've been forced to live within and how it has smashed our understanding of generosity or our imagination or even our connection with others. So, um, you know, loss, grief, it comes up. So we, this cycle of reconnection is how we move from grief to care, to joy, to celebration and back again. I mean, I have to say, I probably do it a dozen times a day because there's so much happening. And instead of uh, getting stuck in it, getting overwhelmed by it, getting, you know, just buried by it and forgetting the place of 
when grief arises, it is time for care. And care for me as someone who's grieved a lot in their lives, um, that's how I uh, nourish my grief because I learned I can't heal my own heart, that I heal it from caring with for others. And in that care for others, we find joy and then we celebrate life. So again, the reminder is to stay where the flow and the nourishment are. Emily. So again, um, as we scroll down here, there are two ways to enter, similar to the ecosystem page. The first is this drop-down menu, which allows you to enter through a question. These topics of grief, care, joy, and celebration hold a lot, but when new people turning to this resource might have a specific need or question, or maybe they're feeling something, but they don't know exactly what they're feeling, one of these questions is able to put language to it in a way that's really supportive of them tending to that feeling. So you can see the questions here as I um, click on this drop down menu. Where can I turn to reconnect to and awaken the power of the collective, to feel rooted in the earth and connected to all life, to feel enchanted by joy? So you can see what speaks to you. Right now, this question of where can I tend, to, uh, where can I turn to tend to an aching heart, is really resonating with me. So I'm going to select that and hit submit. And this will curate a list of resources that Hal, the incredible person who did all the research for this section, delineated as supportive of tending to an aching heart. If I were to enter a different question up here, a different set of resources would be curated. And I want to note here that with this drop down question, um, or this drop down menu, it is a fairly curated list. There are many more resources in this database than these questions will curate. So if you really want to dive into the rabbit hole, searching through these tags, which we'll go through in a moment, will give you a more expansive list, but also more opportunity for, spe for specific curation, since you can select multiple tags at once. But using this drop-down menu is a good way to kind of um, get started into, into diving in here. Um, so let's go through an example using these tags here. Um, let's say I want it, just refresh my page here to clear this search. And so let's say I was interested in finding resources speaking to both ancestry and lineage and arts and culture. So I can select them in these tags here. And you can see just similar to the ecosystem page, it's curating the list in real time. So as I select arts and culture, it'll curate it further. Um, and this goes for all the tags here. You can play with different combinations depending on what you're looking for. And again, you can explore that um, on your own and see what speaks to you. And let's say I knew I specifically wanted to read a book about these things. This second bar here is not topics, but resource type. So you can see there are a lot of different options. The first one is a book. So I can click that and it will curate this okay. further of all books right. that speak no to problem. the ancestry so, um, and lineage and literature. And again, this is, these are links here. Um, if I were to click this, it'll um, take you to where you can learn more about that resource. There's also either an excerpt or a description here, as well as the topics that they're tagged with. So again, how does this connect to the workbook? There's a whole section about the cycle of reconnection in the workbook that starts on page 92. And there you'll find questions relating to the topics of care, grief, joy, and celebration as Jody named. Maybe something really stood out to you from one of these sections that you journaled about the reflection questions. For example, on page 104 in the workbook, there is the question, what do you need now to grieve that has been lost due to the war economy? For me, this brings up grief around being cut off from my ancestry and lineage as a white bodied person whose family has largely assimilated to dominant US culture. So I could use the tag I shared earlier about ancestry and lineage to find resources to support me in learning more about this topic and also engaging in an embodied way. Maybe I find a resource that supports me in creating rituals about grieving that loss and reconnecting with my lineage. Next, we're gonna to move to the pivots to peace. Thanks, Emily. Mm -hmm. So the pivots are core to this work. We want to live in a world of peace, but we first must recognize that the war economy has infiltrated us it has forced us to take on addictive behaviors to succeed in it. Practicing the pivots from the war economy addictions to the peace economy habits will liberate you and therefore nourish what you are creating, unplug you from the war economy and allow your efforts to create the rich soil the peace economy needs to thrive. 
So as I scroll down here, you'll see a little bit of a description about the pivots that Jody just talked about. And then you'll begin to see all the pivots from alienation to connection, from application engagement, from quantity to quality. Let's say I'm today I'm really drawn to the pivot from either or to both and, which is right here. So again, we can see it changes color. Um, I can click on it. It's taking a second. Sorry, let's try a different one. Okay, distraction to attention, don't know why. Um, I didn't wanna go there. So distraction to attention. Um, so then it has reflections, um, questions, maybe some ideas for practices about this pivot. Um, and your workbook is a really great place to record your reflections about these. We intentionally left a lot of blank space throughout the workbook and specifically this section for you to be able to track your learning. Now, if I wanted to explore another pivot, um, I could use this bar up top here. You can see I can scroll over um, to go through, scroll through the remaining pivots and select one. Maybe this pivot uh, sparks something in me about um, accumulation to sharing resources. Maybe one of my reflections led me there. So if I scroll over, you can see from accumulation to sharing resources, and I can click that, and it'll take me directly to that next pivot. So you can navigate through the pivots that way. And next, we're going to inspiration. So we started with culture um, because culture is what how change happens. It is through culture that we become. It is where our humanity is nourished. So we talk a lot about the importance of stories in the local peace economy. And you know, long before this website started to take form, we've been collecting and sharing stories about the local peace economy work happening around the country and the world. And I wanna give a big shout out here to April, who's been a huge part of this website coming together and who also you know, goes out and interviews and writes many of these stories. So as you see here, there's a bit of information about the importance of stories that Jody just talked about as an um, inspiration in this work. And then there's a button here that says the observatory. When you click it, it'll take you to the local peace economy wiki page on the observatory website that has tons of stories you can sift through and read and be inspired by. And as you scroll down here, you'll see a section that says stories from the ecosystem. All the groups featured in the ecosystem that we talked about earlier are um, all the, all, sorry, let me back up. All the groups featured in these stories are also in the ecosystem. So you can see what stories are specifically featuring groups in the ecosystem here in this list. And again, these titles are links to the articles. So I can see how to localize our food system. It features Shy Fresh Kitchen, which is also in the ecosystem. Um, and if you wanted to read more about that, I could click here and it'll take me directly to that story. And next we're gonna go to the workbook. So as you can tell, this site is meant to be a companion to the local peace economy workbook. And the two were really developed in tandem. So if you don't already have a copy of the workbook, you can download a free copy here on this page. You can also purchase a physical copy on the Code Paint website. So as you see, I can scroll down here, put in your information, hit sign up, and the, um, the workbook will be sent to you um, attached to an email that you'll that you'll get that you the email that you put in here. And this last tab here takes you to the uh, Code Pink website directly. So that's the website. I want to highlight a couple of the things that are on the bottom of each page, which are ways for you to continue to learn and connect. So I'm going to go back to the home page for this, but they are on the bottom of each page. So as I scroll down here, you'll see that there's always an option at the bottom of the page to download the workbook that we like we just talked about and also to join our community calls. These take place bi-weekly on Wednesday nights and they're a place for people growing their local peace economies to connect and learn from each other. So you can RSVP here if you click this button um, to connect and um, learn with people. Um, and if you RSVP, you'll be added to the list to get alerts about future calls as well. And we really hope you'll join us. And Jody's putting some of these links in the chat. And I believe um, we'll move on to questions. I'll stop sharing my screen, but I'm happy to share again if uh, it's relevant to a question. So thank you for um, your patience as we like took you on that journey. Uh, do you have any questions? And probably we can um, stop recording, Emily. <laughs>